morning. We're at the Schmooze. It's a nice wintry day here. Oh, I'm dreaming of sunny skies <laughs> and warm beaches. Yeah. Um, and today's topic kind of reflects what's going out out outside. Um, today's topic is kind of um, heavy. Yeah. Dreary. Yeah. Necessary though. Yeah. Um, we are talking about um, an episode in the, what was it called? Modern um, Love. Modern Love. Um, yeah. If you haven't seen it, we'll put the link in the comments. Um, it was the first, um, the first ep season, season episode, episode three. three. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And what they talk about, um, it was very interesting. She gets slowly into this character, and she's hyper. Yeah. Um, hyper. Like the, the manic stage of uh, right. man manic depression. Right. And it's it's really beautiful because it, it starts kind of subtle. You right. Don't, you don't realize this is like, it's just like she's having a really great day. <laughs> and we all have like really great days. When we're, we're, we're on top of the world and everything yeah, flows. Yeah, we're at our, at our best of ourselves. Right. Also. So it's not only like everything outside of us, but we feel like yeah. we're really witty and on top of things like you said and fun mm. and engaging and... And the know. world just not bows, but flows with right, us. Right, right. Um, and then you have those days where it's the opposite. And um, when you told me about this, I started watching it and then you said, okay, let's do it. And then I posted it on Facebook and all of a sudden I started feeling stress, anxiety, <laughs> and pressure. And it was just like, okay, do I really want to talk about this? Yeah. Um, but it is so important. It is such an important topic to open up and um, and discuss and not leave it you know under the carpet and not ignore it um, did you see um, um, Eliel Parker's daughter Tila yeah um, that's another um, important video um, we're, we're gonna put the link to that movie in the comments also because that is such an important video that shows um, how the family members deal with mental illnesses. Right. right. Um, and it's not easy for the person, but it's also not easy for the family members to right. see that. Um, I think today, uh, thanks to the era that we're in, mm -hmm. that we have, besides TV shows that we had back, back then, but we have all the social media, and every person who, who is open about it and shares like their stories of their lives and how they're dealing with it. It, it just adds to, to the possibility of other people to share and, and also to empathize and also to say to themselves, well, it's okay that I took my son to shrink. And you know, I think back in the day, people didn't talk about it. No. Um, my it grandmother, like um, when her when her husband died, she she was a mess mentally, and she was hospitalized. And in those days, she was like electric mm -hmm. electric shocks and stuff like that. And when when she finally got back, it wasn't because she was feeling so great. It was just because they they told her they would probably take her take away her kids for, for good. <laughs> so so she came back. And she got all her kids back together. And the message was back then, and I think a lot of our parents grew up like that, is that everything's okay. Everything's fine. <laughs> everything's fine. And you put on a facade that everything's fine. And you hold that fa facade for, for any price in the world. You cannot show that you're, you're suffering, that you're in pain, that you have a low side, that you know. That you're weak. That you're weak, yeah. And on anything, like also like sexual abuse and, and, and all these other things. But yeah, you, you can't talk about it. You can't right, right. open it up. You can't express that everything is not, you know, like Mrs. Beaver Cleaver. <laughs> yeah. You know, like, like you, you, everything is not tick-tock and yeah. ship shape. And today, it's, it's like, okay, you know, I have several... Uh, connections on the on the social media of women who share 
Mm. One has like a personality disorder, so she's different personalities during, <laughs> during the month. And another one is dealing with depression, and she shares that. And she's, she's now like doing art, and it's doing so much good for her. So you could see also the progress of, and the, oh, wow. not only the challenges, but also the, the way they, you know, they find a way out sometimes. And, and, and it's something that like normalizes this whole uh, ability to speak about it because we grew up in a, you know, we don't speak about this stuff. Maybe it, it, it is somewhere out there in the world, but it's not in our right. <laughs> neighborhood. Right. And I saw, I saw yesterday we were in some, uh, in a group and one of the women shared that uh, she had to take her daughter to, to the hospital because she was swallowing pills and she wanted to commit suicide. And the police came and all that. And I think, that, and I thought to myself, this is really a time of redemption. Why? Because, like maybe even 20 years ago, she wouldn't say it a word. Well, you know, this would happen. It would be a secret in a family. Nobody would tell this stuff. And I think also gradually, also in the Haredi world, it's also happening. You know, people are more courageous. They get inspired. They say, you know. This is an illness that I got. It's not something that I wished for. It's not something I did something wrong to have it. I don't know, you know, you can relate to it as a chemical imbalance or a tendency or I don't know what, but it's definitely nobody's fault, <laughs> you know? Fault. And, and I think it's just like um, the, the, the feeling that you're alone. Yeah. You know, and, and the more people share, the more people open up, um, the more people that say, that take the time and, and you know, to put aside the mask, you know, and, yeah. and, and just give people the time and ask that question, are you okay? Right. You know, I remember um, Sarah Gross, huge shout out to Sarah Gross, we love you. <laughs> um, She's, she, you know, right? So you do like so she's the, a nurse, right? She's uh, a developmental nurse in um, here, and of course you have all the checklists what your kid can do. What my kid has already graduated <laughs> university already. What are you talking about? And then out of left field, she said to me, "This is a few years ago. Like this must have been recent, because it wasn't around with my first kids, and with my one of my, I guess it was Sophia." And I was actually in a good place. I was in a good place. And she, she asks me, she says, you know, the baby, oh yeah, the baby speaks seven languages, graduated, PhD, <laughs> no books. Oh yeah. And then she says to me, Toda, how are you? Are you okay? Do you feel pressure? Do you feel like you need to cry? Do you feel, and it, it took me out of left field, you know, because all of a sudden she's asking about me. All of a sudden you have that awareness that I might not be okay. Right, right. And she just took that time to ask if I was okay. And I was okay. I was in a good place. But I, you know, Sarah, thank you so much for asking if I'm okay. Because there was a time when I wasn't okay. Um, I, after my third, I, um, I didn't realize it at the time. But all of a sudden I had three kids under the age of three. I mean, okay, my, kid, my daughter was turning three in a few months, but it was three kids under the age of three and, and the winter was coming and everything just felt on my shoulders. And I would just lie in bed days, days. And, and, you know, you're sitting there going, you have a beautiful family. There are people that you know that would die to be in your position. And and you have so much blessings. And God has blessed you with a, a husband and a house and a family. And why are you crying? And, and then you feel even worse because you're like, why can't I appreciate my blessings? Like, what is wrong with me? Yeah. And, and that, that question, you know, just asking, are you okay? Yeah. You know, and not like rushing by, you know, pretending that... I'm so important and the rat race is just so important but that you know taking the time to ask if I was okay it was just like thank you you know thank you for asking thank you for taking the time to ask if I'm okay I can't prescribe any pills and I can't I'm not an expert I'm not a professional but I can take the time and say, and say are you okay that's amazing that's amazing and I think you know that's something we should all like take to heart right. and practice that more, especially with all the phones and distractions right. and everything. Just try to pay attention to people around us, people that we meet, even the people that we don't meet so frequently and just let let them answer that question and be there for the answer, not just 
Are you okay? Fine, 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 fine. fine. Baruch Hashem, yeah, yeah. Baruch Hashem, Baruch Hashem. Yeah, <laughs> and really, really, you know, be attentive. I, right. And there's another point I want to mention okay. that I noticed also in this chapter, but also in many, many series. And I don't know if you've noticed, but once you're sort of like into adulthood, okay. even if you're a young adult, uh, there are no pick parents <laughs> existing in these series. Very, very little parents. We mm. see. <laughs> most, most families, except for let's say, um, you know, this is us, where parents are. Very, okay, very good. I haven't you seen have that. to see okay. that. I'm sorry. That will yeah. be the next one of the <laughs> next things that we do. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's going to take you a while to do, go through it because you can't miss it. Okay, okay. 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 Um, maybe that's like sort of an exception to rules, okay. to the rule. But a lot of comedy series, did you see like um, the the police one, 911 or something? Okay. Uh, Brooklyn. Brooklyn 99? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I've seen So. You know, so all these people walk around in the world, they might be parents themselves. Okay. But we don't see their parents, there are no interactions with their parents, and also in this in this chapter, mm -hmm. it really stands out to me how alone she is in the world. It's, it's not only the friendships that she has a hard time cultivating because of the manic depression that she's in, but you would say like your parents would be a go-to. Right. Your parents would be somebody who would call in, especially if you have a manic depressed daughter, you would call in maybe daily to check on her, to see how she was. Right. And that doesn't exist. And I know like my, um, my aunt passed away last week. Sorry. And um, she was my uncle's second wife. She wasn't Jewish. <laughs> she was a very sweet woman. And she has, um, like, my uncle had two adopted kids before he married her, and then they have two, two kids together. So on Shabbat, they had the, like, ceremony, I guess they cremated or whatever, I don't know what. And the son didn't feel like he had to come. This is your mom. She gives birth to you. Oh, my gosh. So I, I don't know how... Even to relate to that, you know, because here we, we are, somebody told me yesterday, you are one involved parent, and I am, and I am because, you know, I feel that's part of what I'm here on earth to do, right. and it, the whole reality that's pictured, I don't know if it's true or not, Okay. of like this, this sort of detachment from your parents, and I don't know, I, I know for sure that that it's the children who do the detachment more than the, more than the parents most of the time, because they don't feel like they need their parents anymore. They don't. They feel like they have to be independent in the world. I don't know what, but it's like it's so weird to me as That's a mom. That's interesting. That's and interesting. I really feel like it's so important to to touch base with your kids oh, my God. and yeah. and to to be somewhat involved in their lives not too much okay when they're older not too much <laughs> you know as Jewish moms we have a tendency as sometimes um, <laughs> it's interesting but you, you remember the song um, the cats in the cradle yeah you, hear? you know the kid is going dad play with me I'm too busy I'm too busy I'm too busy and then yeah. when the kid becomes an adult and the dad finally has some time where he realizes how precious life. He says, "You know, come, let's do something." He's like, "No, I'm too busy." So it's like, there has to be that um, that interaction. Like, where was the parents when the kid was going through all this stuff? Where was the parents? Like, like kids don't just wake up and say, "Oh, parents are not." Um, I think like it's something in the culture. It has a lot to do in the culture. Yeah, I think so. Because the culture says that you're not independent, like, if you're with your parents, you have to, like, the American way it would never have, have my 29-year-old daughter still living in my home. That would be like, she would feel like a total failure or something if she had to live with her parents. I don't think a lot of young adults do that <laughs> in America. I don't even think here. Like, but, I, mean, I don't even think here. And I think it's amazing that you're 
welcoming and accepting that, and that you know you have your own pace and your own time and, yeah. and, and, and things will fall into place when it's supposed to be and in the meantime yeah. this is your home and I, I, yeah, I, yeah. I think that's awesome of you Thank awesome you. I think I would have probably you know <laughs> um, but, but like it's interesting because sometimes you're born with certain attributes certain personality attributes and and um, like sometimes you know I'm, I'm blessed thank God with an upbeat personality right but I, I can not be upbeat. Right. I can sit and cry and cry yeah, and yeah, cry. Yeah, yeah. And then I'm like, oh my God, you know, what, what, what is going wrong with, on with me? Like my my simchat chayim, my happiness of life is, is leaving me. And and then you feel scared because it's like, oh my God. You yeah. Know? And I think it has to like evoke our empathy, like you said. Like everybody has their own challenges. They're meeting their own, dealing with their own hell. Like physical and mental, the, the physical you can see, but the mental is, is inside, and you have the the demons in your head talking to you. Yeah. Um, when I was in Toronto, so I was with my aunt, and I would go on the porch, and you know I would, I would dive in, and um, so you're looking at this beautiful skyline, beautiful. She was on the seventeenth floor, and I'm looking at. Condominium after condominium after condominium after condominium after condominium, and you're like, you know, in each condominium, there's thousands and thousands and thousands of people, and it's it's like they're in their own world. I'm like, I could jump off the bridge, I could jump <laughs> off the porch, and nobody would know, nobody would care. You know, like this this feeling of loneliness. Like you said, I think developing communities where people talk about about depression, about anxiety about, about stress um, people can open up right. and, and, and say I'm not okay I didn't have a good day today right. you know and I, I think that just opens doors and opens possibilities that there's somebody looking out for you that there's somebody there for you um, but yeah totally it starts with parents you know like parents have to be on top of their kids and know what's going on, and know, and 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 the kids have to know that their parents love them unconditionally, with no thought about what I get back, with no thought, oh, you know, today you mouthed off, mm -hmm. today you were chutzpah, mm -hmm. today you didn't do the dishes. I still love you. Right. I still accept you. But also, I think there's also um, a spiritual aspect. Ooh. Okay. <laughs> That is also important that, that we relate to is that there's a, um, there's a term, term in Kabbalah, it's called Ratzov Okay. There's a whole mystical um, appearance in, uh, I think it's in Yechezkel. With uh, the chariots? With uh, like the angels mm, uh, right. running back and forth. Ratzov Shov means back and forth. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, Rabbi Nachman says, that a person should be like fluent in back and fluent in forth. Ooh. That you should know that there are times in life of ups and downs. <laughs> and and you, you should learn how to be with those times. Like I mean, be in the flow? Be, be, yeah, when things go, when everything goes really well for you. And also when you feel really sad and, and even depressed. To know that God is with you throughout the whole time it's not like he disappeared from the picture he's there I love that. and and you know to be with that realization it doesn't mean you don't feel the pain <laughs> mm -hmm. but but you know that that it's only a stage that you're in you know that it, this is something that will pass mm -hmm. you know that like we celebrated yesterday to Bishvat days ago yeah yesterday and Tu is the weirdest holiday I think there is okay because it's like a birthday for the trees that, that doesn't make any sense all the, all the tree huggers <laughs> give them a birthday yeah and when do you give them a birthday not when the tree blossoms not when you see like beautiful fruit no when everything outside like is leafless and half dead <laughs> 
and and you walk around and like it's gray and it's raining. We it was like a storm yesterday, and we celebrate our birthday from the trees. Uh, what is that? And and the sages they say, what are we celebrating? Okay, we're celebrating something we cannot see on the outside. It's a renewal inside. inside. Nice. The trees renew themselves. They have like the what's it called? Sap. The um, sap. 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 Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The sap renews itself on the fifteenth of, of Shvat, wow. and that's what we celebrate. And so we are celebrating a renewal that we can't even see in our bare eyes. It's just knowing that it's there. It's knowing that that the process that we're going through will renew us in some way I eventually. That. I love that. That is so, <laughs> so beautiful because I think it's so true. I think that a lot of times we get sad or 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 unbalanced when when Hashem is trying to tell us, okay, you've done this stage of life and you're getting ready to go to the next stage of life. It's yeah. so like you have to shed everything that you were and, and, and become a new person. Right. And then that, that shedding sometimes, I feel that that shedding is what causes the sadness because you're, you're basically mourning wow. for the death of who you were, right. but you haven't become the new person. You haven't stepped into your new skin. Like a snake, he, yeah, he, yeah. He, he sheds his skin. And I feel sometimes that sadness is that place where you're, sh you're mourning for who you were but you haven't stepped in right. to who you're going to right. be yet. Right. It's like what you were talking about, that stage, you know, that you're, there is a stage, and okay, so now I'm, I'm going to become a new person, you know? It's like, it's like you, you, sometimes your, your, your happiness is so fragile that you're like, okay, when is it gonna end already? Because you're like, you know it can't last, you know those feelings of sadness are gonna come back, and it's like, okay, okay, I have to, I'm happy, I'm happy now, so I have to like do everything. But but you're, you're saying it's like a stage. It's like a a natural form of life, like right. the waves, the waves, right, right, right. They, they go. Uh, and also, I want to say uh, another thing about people. We all go through challenges. That's what you write and talked about right now. Because a lot of people say, oh, let's say somebody has a depression or somebody is whatever, and they say, but other people don't experience it. But we all do have some kind of an experience of that to a level. Okay, we can't experience it like you and nobody else can experience even your joy. We can't experience it instead of you. It's your joy. <laughs> so, but, but we do have the ability to empathize. We do have the ability because we too, every person to their extent goes through this. Okay. And there's a, two other messages that I think is very important when we talk about mental health. Okay. Uh, one is that our personal development is like a spiral. That means that the spiral is going down, or is the spiral it's going, going up. up. Okay, it's going up. Oh, yeah. it's going down. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes it feels like you're going down. Right. Um, that means that a lot of times in life we'll face like the same kind of challenge. Mm -hmm. So I'll take like a stupid example to demonstrate this. But like my husband, every time he comes home from shopping, he always buys something that makes me upset. <laughs> like we would have two bags of pizza in the freezer and he'll buy a third one. <laughs> Why am I laughing? Because my ass is the opposite. Yeah, I can't stand when I shop and I prefer not to shop. But yeah. when I shop, it's like, oh, look, this was nice. And this is, I told and I was like, Toba, I sent you to buy cornflakes and milk. We don't have cornflakes and milk. And yet you bought three colored pasta. I'm like, but it was on sale. Yeah. But yeah, I understand. So, so that's my challenge. Okay. Since with the day we got married, um, shopping is definitely a place to develop my, <laughs> my character. <laughs> also when I shop I have different challenges like you said and but it's not the same challenge every each time Ooh. that's something you Ooh, should be, realize beautiful. that you're you might meet the same point but you're not standing In here you're standing place. here you're standing like that. on top that and, is beautiful and you're, and you're evolving I love that oh 
so that's really important. I think it really, it's really encouraging to know that, that you're in a spiral. You might meet something and you say, wow, I, but I, I had like the same situation two years ago. It's not the same. It looks the same, but love it's it. not the same. You're not the same person love that you, you were two love years it. ago. I love that. I love that. And What's the, the second point? And the second point is, if you don't share, we don't know. <laughs> uh, I find that something that, that I like. I want to scream it out to people because so many people are in pain and suffering and going through I don't know which kind of hell and. They don't say a word and they expect us to know <laughs> but there's no way if you don't share we don't know right. Right. and it's so important to find a way to share you can't talk about it write about it draw something about it you know call call a, a helpline you know because when you share you're not alone and just the feeling that somebody's there with you makes you feel better. I, I can that. tell you. I love that. And just imagining that God is there with you, uh, that also can help. Right. But but a person who's there with you, it makes it more, uh, right. it's easier to feel that he's there with you. <laughs> and if you, if you, you, you know, you don't have the words to say anything, just say, I'm feeling really bad, come sit with me. Oh. Sit with me, right. you know, for, that's for 10 minutes, for 15 minutes, just to feel that somebody's there with you. That's like what Adelia was talking about when she said, you know, she said to her kid, I need a hug. She like, she said, I'm feeling bad and I need a hug. It's like what you're saying, like share what you're saying. I think also I want to say something else um, and then I think we're done, right? Yeah. Um, and we also want to talk about what we're going to talk about next week. Um, I think we, we make, we sometimes make that um, equation time for money mm -hmm. and, and and you can give money whatever money can buy you know all the toys and therapies and, 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 and whatever but if you give somebody your time that's the most valuable thing that that's you can so give you know if you give somebody a smile if you give somebody you know hey are you okay a pat on the shoulder what's going on I haven't heard from you like there's no you cannot equate what time what your time can give to somebody else, and and that is something that money cannot. Oh my God, thunder! <laughs> I'm here with you, Tyler. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I always feel like Chicken Little when they're when they're thundering in the sky. The sky is falling. <laughs> or like Oz, you know, you're you're in Oz, and then you you, you just. <laughs> Thank you for that. That was a good note to end. <laughs> yeah. um, next week, what do you want to talk about? So if you watch it, so the crazy ex-girlfriend. I was thinking of Cheers. Cheers. What do you think about Cheers? Okay, we'll cheers. go back to Cheers. You know, like where the antidote of what we were talking about today, yeah. where she's so alone. You know, when you want to go, where you can see the troubles are all the same. Okay, let's do Cheers. All right. So yeah. everybody watch Cheers. Cheers. Next week. <laughs> and Cheers. Yeah. We'll be back next week on, on The, the Show.